Well, a gracious good day and a good morning to you all. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to Tuesday, August 1st, the first day in August. And uh, I'm Pastor Tim Marvel. I am the senior minister at the uh, Allen Park Presbyterian Church in Allen Park, Michigan. And you are joining in or watching uh, Pastor Tim's Daily News and Devotions, which is a production of the Allen Park Church. We appear here on our Facebook page, uh, try to, most every, Monday through Friday uh, at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, and we have a whole cadre of folks that join us, uh, but we have many, many other folks that also will watch the recorded version of this uh, and catch it as they can, whether it be during the day or perhaps at night. So we do post this also to our YouTube channel, so in both places, um, if you'd like to leave a comment and say hello, we'd love to say hello to you. We are going to have, you'll hear lots of hellos as uh, our morning crew starts to come in. And uh, if uh, if some of you are missing, we wonder where you are. So let's see what we have here. Who do we have so far? i got to come down here. Kevin and Chris Vaughn, good morning. Don and Katie, good morning. And Kip is with us. Barry and Margo are with us. Amy Bowerman, Sandy Sauerbeck. Ken Woods, happy, happy Ken. And hi, Tracy. And uh, see, now I've lost it again. Lots of folks here today. Oh, Norma Bentley. Joan, hello. Judy, hello. Judy Martin, we have so many Judys around here. Hi, Joy and Steve Yambork. Good morning to you. Hope everything's going well. Uh, you're in Concord, I believe, right? Isn't that what you told us yesterday? You said home. I don't know. Maybe Portage Entry is becoming more and more home, right? And Linda Wolf. Hello, Linda. So that's where we are right now. We're going to go back up and uh, just continue. So you know what? It um, Allergies today. Wow. Man, I had them last night. I'm down to, uh, I'm up to, I should say, taking my allergy medicine twice a day. And uh, it does help, but boy, I tell you, I, I walked the dog this morning and there's a lot of smoke from those Canadian wildfires that has invaded this area overnight. And uh, we had one of those smoky mornings where you can just see the, the sun is there, but uh, it's kind of just burning its way through that smoke. So, uh, I hope you're all doing well. We've got another beautiful day. Uh, it's going to start heating up, but right now it's beautiful. So, we need to enjoy this day because this is where we are. This is where God has placed us. And we're told that each and every day, what? To rejoice and to be glad in the day that God has made us. So, for those of you who are joining us live, we're going to open this day up. And for those who watch us later on, um, and perhaps you're taking a rest during your day. We're going to hear about rest again in the gospel reading, or perhaps you're finishing your day. So as far as news goes, we're starting to roll up this stuff. So a lot of uh, our committees will start to, to meet again here um, uh, coming up before too long, starting this week or next week. Most of them are second Tuesdays. So this is like the first Tuesday here, right, of the month because it's August. So uh, we've got some stuff coming up, uh, and uh, I don't know. Uh, take a look. I'm not sure where the deacons are doing. Um, I don't know if they're meeting here this week or not, but um, I know Carrie would know. Let's see here. Hi, Barbara Wolf. Hi, Sue Tucker. All right. So anyway, so... All I'm saying is that we're not, we haven't been sleeping, we've been resting. So as, as we start to get up from our rest, uh, there'll be, there's going to be more stuff coming. We always continue to do ministry. So continue to support the ministries of the church, especially our food pantry. We've got a lot of stuff going on with the food pantry. You could always use help, always use help. And probably it's looking a little barren, so maybe financial help would be a good way to help now. All right, we are going to uh, turn our attention over here to our devotions and uh it's neat we're gonna because they 
these devotions today, three of them for sure are stories. We're just continuing on a story um, about ordinary people doing some extraordinary things, right, um, with, with the power of the Holy Spirit. So um, we're going to hear that three out of four times. Maybe that's the theme, that common thread that we talk about. Um, now, before we get going on our devotions, I got two things. Well, one thing I'm going to say, and then I'm going to do another one. The first thing is, we're starting, um, if you read along uh, in many translations in the Psalms, um, you'll see that in italics, after some, it says Selah, S-E-L-A-H. And we've talked about this before, but maybe you weren't here when we talked about it. That is an enforced rest. Um, that means that you're supposed to stop, breathe, right? Ponder. Now, there's a couple things that, that can cause us to focus our attention on certain things. But some of this stuff, uh, we're probably set to meter. Uh, originally, we've lost those tunes, although there's been, there's been some kind of interesting work saying if we take the Hebrew and we put it into the meters that were known, can we, can we reclaim some of these psalms to, to the original thing? It's, it's interesting uh, to listen. I, I spent a lot of time finding a website that did that, and uh, and then I listened. I'm like, oh, I'm glad I did that, but I don't need to do it again. So, because it's in Hebrew, right? so we are going to read uh, these devotions, and and here we had one yesterday. We also have a Selah, and I've kind of been skipping over that, but I'm going to start to I'm going to start to do that pause, that enforced pause, and then the second thing is, of course, my breathing exercise which I welcome you in to do, to take the business of this day and set it aside just so that we might have God's word for us, right? And uh, so I'm going to do that right now. I breathe in for a count of five, I hold it for a count of five, and then I exhale for that same count. So if you'd like to participate, feel free. Come, Lord Jesus. Our opening devotion is Psalm 54. Let's listen for the word of the Lord for us today. Save me, O God, by your name, and vindicate me by your might. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For the insolent have risen against me. The ruthless seek my life. Would you not set God before them? Selah. But surely God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. He will repay my enemies for their evil. In your faithfulness, put an end to them. With a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. For he has delivered me from every trouble, and my eyes have looked in triumph on my enemies. So in this reading of the word of the Lord, all thanks be to God. You see where the Selah enforced, right? We went, we turned, we had that opportunity to put this person, had this opportunity to put all of their concerns and uh, their troubles in front of God and then just breathe. It's out there. And then here we come and says, God is my helper. Now, now here's the, the resurrection, right, of this person's strength and this will. And these things haven't gone away, right, but, but they're there. And uh, he continues to be with this person as they go through their life. But strengthened, transformed. All right. So we're going to move over into 2 Samuel. Um, so we're continuing the saga of David. And if you remember, we left this. Saul's dead. Uh, David has been proclaimed king of Judah. Uh, but uh, many of the houses of Israel have continued to follow Saul's son, right? And um, we're going to hear about that. Remember, the three, old, the three of Saul's children were killed along with him in this battle with the Philistines. Um, but we do have this one, right? So we know Abner. We're going to hear about Abner. Abner was the military leader of the armies of Saul. So here we go. 
this we're in this in between time of a divided kingdom, is what they call it. You know, it was the king, kingdom of Israel, kingdom of Judah. David's with Judah. So here we go. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. Second Samuel three verse six through twenty one. While there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David, Abner was making himself strong in the house of Saul. Now Saul had a concubine whose name was Rizpah, daughter of Ea, and Ishbael, son of Saul, said to Abner, Why have you gone into my father's concubine? The words of Ishbael made Abner very angry. He said, Am I a dog's head for Judah? Today I keep showing loyalty to the house of your father Saul, to his brothers and to his friends, and have not given you into the hand of David, and yet you charge me now with a crime concerning this woman. So may God do to Abner, and so may he add to it. For just what the Lord has sworn to David, that I will accomplish for him, to transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul and set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah, from Dan to Beersheba. Beer, I'm sorry, Beer, Beersheba. And Ishbael could not answer Abner another word, because he feared him. Abner sent messages to David at Hebron, saying, To whom does the land belong? Make your covenant with me, and I will give you my support, and bring all Israel over to you. He said, this is David, good, I will make a covenant with you, but one thing I require of you, you shall never appear in my presence unless you bring Saul's daughter, Michal, when you come to see me. And David sent messengers to Saul's son, Ishbael, saying, Give me my wife, Michal, to whom I became engaged at the price of 100 foreskins of the Philistines. Ishbael sent and took her from her husband, uh, Petil, the son of Laish, but her husband went with her, weeping as he walked behind her all the way to Beirim. Then Abner said to him, Go back home. So he went back. Abner sent word to the elders of Israel, saying, For some time past you have been seeking David as king over you. Now then, bring it about, for the Lord has promised David, Through my servant David I will save my people Israel from the hand of the Philistines and from all their enemies. Abner also spoke directly to the Benjamites. Then Abner went to tell David at Hebron all that Israel and the whole house of Benjamin were ready to do. When Abner came with 20 men to David at Hebron, David made a feast for Abner and the men who were with him. Abner said to David, Let me go and rally all Israel to my lord the king, in order that they may make a covenant with you and that you may reign over all that your heart desires. So David dismissed Abner, and he went away in peace. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So we're seeing the pettiness of Saul continue on in his lineage. And um, so goes after uh, the chief of the army, you know, makes these charges against them. Now, it doesn't say it did happen, right? Uh, he's angry. He says, "Am I a dog's head for Judah? What are you telling me? Are you telling me that I'm that I'm I'm just somebody um, out here that I'm nobody? Judah, is, remember, is the southern kingdom that David's at. How can you say that? How can you how can you impinge me? Look at all that I'm doing for you. But now he turns. So there's a lot of intrigue in this story, and it's not over yet. But uh, but we're starting to see uh, the houses, the twelve tribes, begin. To organize under David. Okay, now we're going to move from that Old Testament story to this New Testament story that's um, about Paul. So um, I'm not sure how to do this. We're going to hear a whole... Yesterday we read about how Paul and Silas split off from... Uh, I'm sorry, um, Paul picked up Timothy and Paul and Silas went off, but we have um, John Mark uh, and Barnabas that are going off on their own journey. So there's a split at this point. And we need to understand that if we take a look at, at a map, um, 
that they are in that they are north of the current day Israel and you'll hear Asia and that that's not Asia like we think of Asia Asia was just to the east of that so that when you hear of, of Asia but you'll hear about Macedonia and um, I don't know I'm gonna try this you tell me if this works I don't know because I think it's gonna be backwards and everything so this might this isn't gonna work I don't think but no you can't see it. yeah yeah okay there you go that's a map everything backwards here yeah everything no that's not gonna work anyway so if you take a look at that Mediterranean, you have what is called Asia, which is current day uh, Greece, and then you have Turkey beyond that. So this is what we're hearing about. They're not going to go across the land bridges. They're going to get on a boat and go across. But if you take a look at that Mediterranean, all those Greek isles, those beautiful, beautiful areas in the Mediterranean, that's, that is where these folks are going to be today. So let's listen for the word of the Lord. From Acts chapter 16, 6 through 15. They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, uh, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. When they had come opposite uh, Mysia, they attempted to go into Bith Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Tro Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision there. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Trohas. So this is in the very far north of the Mediterranean. And, and Trohas sits down on this Athenian um, coast. And then they're going to go back over here to what's modern-day Turkey. And we took a straight course to uh, Samothrace the following day to Neapolis. And from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her husband were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. A couple things. They're wandering, right? But they say that um, God is guiding them where they were supposed to declare the gospel. Um, and this is kind of where we were like on Sunday when we read out of Romans and say, you know, all things work for the good of God. So um, you might say, well, we couldn't go there. Well, maybe you couldn't go there because God had something else in mind. And that's the way that they're doing it. This is talking about we, so this person accompanied um, Silas and Paul, and um, we think that this is Luke, right? Because Luke wrote both, not only the Gospel of Luke, but also uh, continued on with the Acts of the Apostles. So we know that uh, there's at least three people here, if not more. And they end up in Philippi, and they do a lot in Philippi, including end, end up ending up in jail. And they go to where the people gather. So um, they had heard that outside that there was a place where people gathered f to pray. Not that they believed in God through Christ, but they were that they were spiritual. So they go there and um, they meet this woman who was Lydia, a worshiper of God. And they introduce her to this way of Christianity. And she is baptized and her family is baptized. But Lydia is a woman of extreme wealth. She's a dealer in purple cloth, and uh, purple uh, is a dye that throughout history has been uh, the most expensive of all dyes. And in fact, at this time that this was written, um, they actually had to do an extraction process from the shells of uh, certain snails. And uh, took a long time, took a lot of snails to make a little dye. 
and um, um, so very very expensive stuff so she is selling to very rich people and she has done that and she says if you think you know help me so here we go we're seeing that um, the early churches they were led there because now they have somebody who's uh, become a faithful follower but also has a means in a way that they can continue their ministry okay we're okay on time i'm going to go over here to mark our gospel reading and um, you know it's just seems sometimes sometimes god throws things in front of you on a continuous basis just about the time you forgot about the last one he threw you know something else it shows up again and i have to say that this jesus feeding whether it be the four thousand or five thousand has now been uh, god's now thrown this in my lap an awful lot in the last i'm going to say six weeks so when i first read this i'm like again not only do i know this but you guys all know this too but but i'm like well there's got to be something deeper here for us so let's see if we can't might be figure out what that is together as we read the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verse 30 through 46. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. I'm going to pause right there. So they've gone out. He's gone out and said, hey, go. This is my words. <laughs> right? Go play. Go play with this power that you've been given. Right? So... They went out and they came back. Can you imagine this? They're like, oh my God, you can't believe what I was healed. Just this, you know, right? So they come back up here again. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even. Went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Going and recognized them and they heard there unto them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, many things. When it grew, this is a deserted place, and the hour is now very late, so that they may go into the surrounding for themselves to eat. But Jesus, you give them something to eat. They said to him, are we? worth of bread and give it them to eat those have you go and see they said two five and two fish then he ordered them to get in groups on the green grass hundreds and fifties taking the five loaves and two fish he looked and gave them to his disciples and he divided the two fish among them all and were filled and they took up 12 baskets those who had eaten the loaves numbered 5,000 men he made his disciples get into the boat and go on. He dismissed the crowd. After saying farewell to them, he so ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks. I mean, I, I've got for a while that the key phrase that this thing hinges on, you feed them. And they've had this experience. And I've preached about, you say that before. That's true. That's true. And uh, told me was things, and that um, to uh, work with the people, or that we're mentoring. Jesus was this way, and we need to tell them. Oh, sometimes just to say. So go. Right, it's the ultimate. Right, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna sh tell you. I'm going to show it, and then you're going to teach somebody else. That's how we know that we've, you know, classic learning, so know it for sure until you can teach it to somebody else. It's passed down. All right. We're here. Carrie, thank you. And Sheila's back. Yes. Hi, Bob. There you go. Carrie just in September. All right. 
ChristNet looking for someone to deliver the serial contact with Carrie. Thank you so much. Hi, Barb Bussing. Good to see you. All right. I think we have a lot of action uh, with us right now. 24 devices. As long as I can remember to, we're really good. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, we've heard about stuff going on with the church. Remember, www.allenparkprez. That's our website, and everything is linked there. You'll find any information to contact any of our ministries. There's a prayer button. Just you know, click on that prayer information as you would like on that. And when I say I say that, but you're prayer and you'll find out but if you would like to to have your name known to have a contact phone number or a con um, uh, the reason for the prayer and if that prayer you'd like or, or there's also you can just say I want to remain anonymous and that's fine too so anyway pray for those and we do need to pray for them she's been battling a blood and um, so yeah man that, that little girl is the bravest person bravest person so there's lots of people, and we will in our prayers. Let's pray. Heavenly Lord, we gather this day, and as always, we open our days with working in the world. As we go about our, our days, let us know that, uh, uh, oh, just an eye blink away. So, Lord, let us look beneath. These things appear so that we may your awe and your wonder in our lives and uh, who are not feeling well. We pray and uh, for those of us who have other aches and pains, Lord, would have healing there. But we pray for those who have long-term illnesses, uh, long treatment plans. And Lord, sometimes the seem to be there. You need to get through really difficult times. And so uh, we, we lift up prayer. We know that you were in the process of healing them, but we can certainly be part of it. We thank you for get, delivering Sheila safely from Florida here. As she begins to open and forge, uh, we will open our arms. Unity. And uh, we want to continue to pray, uh, pray for Mike Amber uh, and his wife as they continue to battle. Lord, uh, there's, there's other people on our heart and in the moment of sight all those individual prayers and Lord 